Hello and good evening ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the new year of 2020 and the continuation to the Goosebumps Horror Town Shop to Drop Dead Part 2. This was a something that has been anticipated and apologies on having to wait, but I wanted to make sure I covered everything with this update as possible, which means I had to wait until it was fully ended. And fully ended, it has. Uh, originally, there was supposed to be two videos of this, but now I had to split it into three. So, it would be this part, part three, and then part four, final, for this stuff. I think the last part is going to be the longest, because I am going to be doing a bit of a review at that point there as well. And I figure I might as well bring this up, because I probably won't be able to share with this during the other parts, but I'm going to do it right here. So during when this event was going on, I decided to commission from an artist that goes by the name of It's an Odd Audra, I believe that's how they how to pronounce the name, but I might be mistaken, apologies on that. You might be familiar of their work because uh, I mentioned them during the Valentine's Day update. They were the ones whose design ended up becoming part of the um, Madame Doom's look. So that was that person's the um, thing. They also are responsible for the avatar you see me portray here and uh, other situations like that. But I wanted to commission from them this image here of uh, good old Reggie looking at himself in his true form, which you've kind of gotten to look at during the other two parts. But in this part, we're going to be taking a look more into Reggie's face. And yes, it also features the mannequins in the store, and uh, fortunately, the one item that will be a bit controversial during this time, I'll explain why in a minute. If you are curious, I will link because of their request. For their request, I've decided to also put in down in the description, or even in this video if possible, their Twitter and Instagram handle which is it's Andra, but I will also provide the links to them. That was part of the request to be able to share with that. Um, they're mostly active during those two parts, but if you like to commission from them, that's probably the best way to reach them. So that or, you know, go email. That guy did. But anyways, I talked long enough. Let's go ahead and dive right in. This part, we're going to be taking a look at mostly the Santa Claus uh, event that we've had before, seeing what has new quests and tail, and also a bit of the new character Reggie, and a bit of the storyline to see where that goes. So let's just dive right in and see where this lasts out, shall we? So when we come back, the world goes, and I just want to show Autos ends still running. That too, all these products from last event, or in this case the you know what event uh still running stuff so i decided to just turn those off and uh for some reason crosby's uh his building is wrong way round though it is one of the buildings that has changed so that's great let me put that right here okay good on fixed uh going up here uh, unfortunately we have poor um, I'm trying to remember, I think it's Libby, Mask Mutant, is now hiding over there. Again, Flower Garden, I'm gonna turn that off right now. And, uh, I just wanted to share with you Jonathan Chiller. I did show this at Crafting 101, but during the time, I had no idea Jonathan Chiller was actually gonna be active from the part I shared with you. So, this is my chance to share with you now what good old Chiller has in store. So, most of his quests are useful except for one, which drops camera reels, so, you know, nothing new with quest-wise there. Also, there was another new quest I forgot to share, which is, uh, scheming. And I did show this off during the other part, but here's a close-up of him scheming. This is an interesting animation I ended up, uh, at, like, asking them to do, because I always thought there was supposed to be a missing of his evil form. Also a surprise, Sam is a useful character, kinda. He's able to give you Reeves and cards, so that's also something to keep in mind. So I'm gonna have him do that because, you know, 
Also, I just want to point this out. A uh, new, uh, new quest has been added, which is hide behind a bush. It'll allow you to drop flower oil, which is the only character that can absolutely drop you this, so that's very useful for getting certain items. Also, this happened. Apparently, playing through the quest stuff allows me to, for some reason, uh, get actual event items, which is, in this case, the... Uh, the the candy canes are there very intriguing that you can win those per, like event stuff during those times but anyways here's a quest let's go our story begins where all the stories are made right in the town's very own promenade the mayor is getting all the neighbors to town hall as he unveils the plans for horror town's new mall beloved citizens our plan of having the christmas play has been postponed to make way for a thrilling new project. What? I had already bought tickets for the whole family. On another note, has anyone else noticed every time something bad happens, it's always hosted on the promenade? Citizens of this town, I understand your concerns about this announcement, but please, at least hear me out. Yes, Reggie's being played by me, unfortunately. I know, very sad. Also, I love the fact that Mr. Mortman is the character I decided to have him just basically point out the promenade has been the cause of most things. And that's why my father, Mr. Mayfield, has decided to help your town's economy by presenting you with this unique new shopping center. He's even offering lots of bargains on exotic and rare items. You'll be saving so much money, it'll be like stealing it away. Even if what you said is true, what would become of the children? They were expecting to have fun this year for the holidays. Already taken care of, my father's company have designed a super jolly holiday scavenger hunt to keep them out of the, uh, I mean, entertained. Also, kids will be able to trade in items they've collected in exchange for some fun toys we've created for them. Fine, I'll give this ridiculous huge mall a chance. There might be something there that I can get for my children. Go shopping around, place two of the make a monster kiosk, and obtain some uh, decoration reefs. Um, honestly, the reefs are probably the like this is another easy task, but this is their first chance of learning about and getting a little bit of the new character's personality of Reggie. Reggie, I've designed him to be that of a character who um is a spoiled brat but in the story because he's so um what do you call it he's very um I'm trying to think of the word but he's able to kind of lie to you but make it very convincing he's that kind of personality and i wanted to show that off through here the other thing too is during this storyline which you're gonna appreciate i decided to kind of explain why you're crafting these kind of oh you're getting these items and you're crafting these certain items and why you're giving them to this place which is in this case the make a monster also there's a close-up the make a monster kiosk the kiosk by the way is kind of inspired by an actual kiosk of the build-a-bear type of uh, stuff I wanted a bit of the make a monster on the side because I don't know I like that kind of building of the creepy uh, bear stuff here also for some reason the audio is gonna go out right about now I don't know what the hell happened but yeah the audio is just like gone so for this small little clip here it's going to be my voice only and no sound effects or vocals I don't know why sometimes my clips ends up doing this there must be something I do that might cause it to kind of screw up the audio I'm gonna be cautious about stuff like that but we'll see what ends up happening but yeah it's interesting you can actually see the screen of where you actually make and this is how much it drops by the way with the items and per se I need two of these so it's gonna be a little while until I can get another one uh, unfortunately, I'm going to have to have our good old uh, character to redo that again because unfortunately her um, way of doing things has caused some issues. Be what do you call it? The game has this weird way of just looking at things and saying, oh, well, because uh, you have her doing the task beforehand, now you've gotten this here. Also, the Jinger Horror Pack as we can see here and magically 
we move on to the next part here, which is with good old claws. Who will be doing this for us? So let's see. Drink some coffee. Play like Santa. So we got some stuff here, and she should be done her task, which should. So that will count now for that. So now all we have to do is just gather the reefs. Because I have so many of these things and reefs, it's going to be ridiculously easy for me to grab them. So that's not going to be much of a problem. Uh, what you'll find, and I'm going to talk about this when the certain quests come up. I had no um, involvement when it comes to the economy, when it comes to characters that drop items and what items were provided to you. That was all done by uh, a certain aspect kind of uh, the the development team so I'll be talking about the problem I had with this game and a lot of people had uh, one thing I wanted to note during this pack the the actual snowmen here um, you can buy them with event currency but the problem of that is that they ended up disappearing and this recently we I've discovered through the forums that apparently there was an error that happened, much like how the trees ended up disappearing, the uh, snowmen also disappeared, so that meant some of the quests are gone. Also, yeah, the scary Goosebumps logo is back. Uh, so this is a graphical error all happening on my specific device. I can tell you that if I logged into somewhere else, it would be just fine. For some reason, I don't know why, but Apparently, different devices, I'm guessing different versions of Android, has an issue when it comes to reading certain codes, and for some reason they can't find that image. The best explain, whenever you see the Goosebumps spooky logo, that's their default error, um, like 40101 image error. So if you're ever curious on when you see a spooky, ooh, Goosebumps logo, <coughs> that's the reason, it's because... For some reason, they can't detect where the image file is, so that's what they display instead. It's an interesting way of doing it, I will say. Also, I try to figure out where to put Reggie. I ended up concluding where to put him at the end. I will explain in a minute in a few episodes in. But for now, we're going to utilize the empty space over here, which will be the future site of probably the ghost beach. But, yeah, for now, this is where you're going to be living. Okay, Reggie? With your creepy-looking mansion building. Oh, look, Reggie. Yay, there he is. <laughs> so we're going to get into Reggie's quest. But, yeah, here he is. He walks very strange. So let's see what he has to say. Reggie Mayfield is a spoiled brat who wants things to get done and doesn't want to be looked at as just Mr. Mayfield's son. He's a smart kid and has been telling some pretty tall lies. But be careful about what his father's mall hides inside. Father insists I get into the family business and wouldn't give me my allowance unless I do so. Why do I have to do it? It's not like he's in a hurry to give up his job to me anyways. Well, I'm here now. Oh, that must be my contact in this town. Networking time. Looking, uh, taking a business call, placing the thingy, and doing something else, which I didn't get a chance to look at, unfortunately. Uh, one thing I will explain when it comes to what I just... Okay, so here is his quest. Take a business call, make it rain, opening the beast present, and hide at home for a while for 14 hours. Why so much? These other three are animated, but the hide is just not... Uh, I'm going to show you my favorite one, which you've already seen before, but here's the close-up. Him opening the beast present. My goodness, look how big this guy is. I've already explained this in the other parts, but I really gotta dig into the design team for making him really big. And look, oh look who it is, it's, it's, it's Saber himself. Look how, to compare these two from one another, he's probably, as of right now, the big, okay, no, wait. I take that back. The biggest monster is the mud monsters. <laughs> I gotta love that little face he has there. It looks weird at first, but I kind of grew to like it. I I give them the I, I give the development team the designers a plus on that one. Really good when it comes to the actual animation and taking my 
inspiration. The Horror Town sign, uh, yeah, they're utilizing the logo here, but the original idea was, oh, let's have the Horror Town logo be placed here. But unfortunately, uh, due to my dumb, this, uh, there were certain errors, which I'll point later. Anyways, this is the Horror, Horror Days Not Over pack, which is a pack that is one of those available anytime, so you can keep on buying this and get the same items, so nothing is excluded. Uh, during this part, we're going to open Get the Tree for Sale, which is another item that we'll need eventually. But why you need this is because Courtney is the only person who's able to utilize this event here. Or this item here to be able to drop a uh, certain item. I believe... Yeah, I'm going to move this away right now so I can share with you the her animation. I like how I design... Uh, not design, but I kind of suggested this is what the tree for sales would look like. And now we're going to have her do the Make a Snow Angel animation. And I got to say, I love, I kind of like what they did here. But at the same time, I'm looking at it and I'm just like, well, here, like, here it is. Yep, she's making snow angels. And it's very inconvenient in front of the poor tree for sale sign. So, so some poor smuck wants to buy a Christmas tree. Now, she, now, now they can't because... Look, there, there's this child making a snow angel right in front of the building. I'll give them credit. I do like the fact that they decided to do this in order to assist the whole... Um, that's just giving you updates there. Okay, wait. So I took a... I saw a, a quick glimpse at it. It's the make a... Uh, like the Blasto Ape chimes, yeah. So that'll be Grandma. It's going to utilize that. And we're going to now look at the Mayfield Bazaar. This is the most bizarre quest. I'm going to bring this up during my interview, but... Uh, my review, but why Why is he costing 50 of these? Why? It, it, normally, characters that are premium are free. Why do I have to pay into this? This defeats the purpose. The only reason now you get them is because, oh, it'll give you 100% if you add it. So, let's take a look at the minions, which are... The mall mannequins. There they are. Yeah, so these are the mall mannequins coming up here. It's gonna do their spooky oogity boogity. Alright, let's get another close up here. So this is a better look at them. Animation wise. Yeah, 23 days. Doing them scares. I do like how they they animated them to look a little bit different compared to uh, the mass uh, magical assistant. Now, the reason why I did the mall mannequins is because when you think of the mannequins, you always brought back to this uh, part of the story. Even in the Goosebumps, the game, that these were featured in. And I wanted to design them to make them look like somewhat employees, but also advertise the clothing line. And i guessing with the reasoning on why they're animated like this or running around and doing this kind of thing and then standing still i'm guessing the way to design it i do like too the the bat the images of uh the characters um background is like weirdly designed like you see the profile picture the heads turned around to make them look like very bizarre I'm guessing it's because, oh, look at that, I got lucky, just one character and I ended up getting the uh, haunting bag or haunting gift shop item. Uh, yeah, so besides the magical assistant, what makes them different is the magical assistant is being controlled by someone who has a mind. So being able to actually show off, um, being able to control puppet wives. However, when it comes to these things they have no mind so they're kind of like weird dumb zombies also i'm going to show you another animation which is the make it rain this will help you get the laugh-o-matic things and uh oh boy the very very interesting uh, animations i must say <laughs> Yeah, so this is his animation, which is him shooting a, a, a money gun, and then money falls down. I I was trying to think what would make sense for a character like this, what he would do for animation-wise, so 
I thought, well, he's supposed to be a rich kid, so, and he's spoiled, so, it, that would be something he would do. He would just, just throw money around like it means nothing to him, because he just, he just kind of comes off as that kind of kid. Also, if you're wondering why I designed, or why I asked them to design Reggie the way he looked, was, uh, namely, uh, just because of the, his name, uh, reminds me of another famous Reggie character. <laughs> the My Body Is Ready guy. I won't show you who he is, but if you type that in, you'll probably come up with exactly who. Oh, hold on a second. He's going to drink his coffee. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, old man is drinking his coffee now to finish the quest. Uh, but, yeah... <laughs> And that, that's not the only reason. The other reason is, too, is that the mall's name is called the Mayfield Bazaar. And usually when you think of a bazaar, you'd think of one of those weird market shops in um, certain places. Uh, yeah, and it takes this much time in order for a cooldown period to happen, so just keep that in note. Anyways, we got 23 days left during this part, so good to know. Anyways, time's passed. Now we're going to show you what Reggie looks like. And my god, he looks big. <laughs> Imagine that coming out of the mall. Like, where is he going? Oh, he's going to go scare this guy. Yeah, you know what? No, that guy deserves it. Go get him. Yeah, swipe. Oh, he's going to swipe at Mrs. Marr. Eh. Again, I gotta love their animation. Like, again, I suggest... Uh, here's the weird thing, too, when it comes to some of these designs. Um, speak of the... There's there's the mannequin. Yeah, speak of their designs. Um, what's interesting about um, doing something like this, or learning something like this, is uh, part of the thing is that you have to also tell them how the animation should look, and you have to give them some sort of reference base, so... I had to look around and be like, well, how would how would this character do this? And I'm like, well, maybe you'll do like a swiping animation like what I provide. And then they kind of implement that. And with the mannequins, I basically gave them like, well, make them look like they're just walking strangely. And I gave the reference to a Let's Player. I believe he's known as um, John Wolfe. I think that's what he goes by. He's a famous... He's not really famous, but he's... Uh, if you know horror games very well, you probably know this guy because he's been playing a lot of them. He also played a bunch of Goosebump games too, so there's that. But yeah, he did one of the Goosebumps of the game, and he ended up dying to the mannequins. And I'm just like, yeah, have him walk around like this. So basically utilize the mannequins um the magical assistance kind of animation style but make it unique so that it stands out also finally we're gonna get to his animation of taking a business call which is him walking around with a phone i had to make sure this is the 90s so i had to make sure that his phone was a big brick because back in the day the cell phones were not these cool little mini computers, tablets we got. No, they were big, hunking pieces of brick you carry around with you. And there's a chance that you probably would get some sort of bad radiation poisoning or something. Like the really old, archaic phones. And I think the cell phone mark... Come to Toys and Crafts Shop, the number one spot for gifts this Christmas. That voice. Chris? Oh, wow. I almost couldn't recognize you. Nice beard, by the way. Oh, hey there, Seder. Uh, wanna talk for a minute before I lose my mind dealing with these kids? Sure, Chris. So what's with the getup? I'm Santa Claus. Can't you tell from my outfit? Santa? Didn't that guy wear green? I forgot that we had this quest going on. Christmas is about hope, charity, joy, and peace. And Santa, he stands for everything good. Sounds like portraying that guy's a noble profession, right? I know, right? It makes you feel really good inside. It's not glamorous, but hey, maybe you could play Santa next year too. You got the beard, so maybe you could pull it off. Huh. Me being Santa. Sure. 
Maybe I could try that next Christmas. You lie. This is already next Christmas, and yet you did diddly squat. <laughs> that would be a funny sight. <laughs> I mean, you saying ho, ho, ho? Make him uh, go to his mother's house, obtain some cardboard, and place some uh, street clocks. Yeah, originally I had an idea with Chris uh, Claus coming back into the mall, but because of the limitation of the quest, I had to basically limit that. And, oh. Oh, four dollars. Nice. Thanks. Premium stuff. That means I have to... I'm not gonna do math, but that's about 20 bucks. Nice. Good. <laughs> 20 bucks, little man. Alright, I'm not gonna do that. Um, one of the things I also wanted to do when it came to some of these quests, especially when it came to Reggie, is that it wouldn't take away from the main story. Like, you didn't need to have them in order to understand what was going on, like, plot-wise. I wanted it to be a special kind of add-on experience, so it's like, how did the mall get there in the first place? What was, um, like, why is Reggie here? What, all this stuff. It's like... Well, here's your answer. Here you go. I, I try to explain as much as I can and throw a little bit of Easter eggs every now and then to you guys. Because I'm a nerd, too. And I like, and I know the people within the Goosebumps community, they love their references. So I'm like, well, I'm going to throw it in there because, you know. Especially with the Blasto Ape chimes, uh, the Blasto Ape uh, thing. Because there's two items now with Blasto Ape being advertised, too. And because of it, a lot of people are like, oh, maybe we're going to get the, um, um, what do you call it, the, um, invasion from the Silver Scream thing. And I'm just like, well, I can see that happening in an event when it comes to movies. Also, yeah, might as well show this off too. Also, you might be wondering, why am I kind of showing off, uh, like, the Chris's story because I did this last year right and yes I did do this last year but there's a good reason why I'm showing this off again because well acting was bad I didn't have it as professionally as I am doing it now like a year has basically changed this for a while the other reason too is just to share with you what these guys look up close up because I know people I know there's one guy in the forum like here you go look I know there's somebody in the forum that's like, well, I need references for stuff. So it's like, well, let me give you, like, let me show you. Okay, there you go. Nice and nice close-up of it. So now you don't have to, have to, uh, like, go through things. Like, I'm giving you the, the imprecations to you. <laughs> to use, I guess. Um, the other interesting thing, though, uh... The reason why I'm also bringing up Chris, and this won't be noted in this part per se but the next part when we finish his story is hilarious to me because I realize his story kinda has a bit of a nuance this time in the sense of it reminds me of something that has just recently happened and the, the people who wrote this game the Goosebumps people they uh they were ahead of the times. They they predicted a character in the most well received movie of 2019. As of right now, the most grossed movie. Uh, when it comes to R rating, it it's hilarious to me. Oh, and I didn't get the the thing by the way. This is one of the big problems that I'm going to talk about. And the, the percentage of the uh, Santa Thrones sucks. It was sucky so bad. I feel like the reason why that might be the case is because they kind of just put it in there without real like, information. Part of that could be my fault, per se, because I didn't really go into it. But, you know, here's like you know, at the end of the day, it's what it is. So after I put this uh, monster thing down, here we go. You know, Eugene, now that I don't have to work on that play anymore, why don't we check out this new mall together? I don't know, Agatha. There's something off about that place, even from my standards. This mall, it's amazing. It has everything I could think of, and then some. But of course, madame. Only the best selections for my father's customers. Look at all these books. There's so much of them. I didn't even know some of them existed. You see, Eugene, this mall isn't all that bad. In fact, it's probably the best thing has happened in this town. You want to bet? 
I wonder what the play they were supposed to do is, by the way. As the adults and older kids go holiday shopping, the news of play cancellations are indeed rather shocking. What? You mean to tell me I've learned those stupid lines for nothing? Dustin, you only have one line to remember. Children, please. I know how much this play means to you all. As an apology, my father has created a super jolly holiday scavenger hunt for you all. Hey, why can't we go into your mall there just like everyone else, rich boy? <sighs> Look, I didn't want to alarm you all since you kids are a smart bunch. But there's a reason for not letting you in, is... It is what? What is it? Alright, make a list, obtain Santa's toy bags, and place the inflatable blast away. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna check his list. He's gonna make his list and check it twice. <laughs> find out what books he wants. Uh, find out what books are good and bad. I don't know. I mean, I tried to butcher the Santa Claus song, whatever. But yeah, I love it. I ended up uh, causing the the like uh, cliffhanger, as it were, like the the most famous thing that comes with R.L. Stein is leaving you on a cliffhanger, like oh. Oh my god, something's coming! What is it? Next chapter. Oh, it's nothing. Nice. <laughs> anyway, 21 days has passed. Um, the reason I'm showing you this is so I can share with you that I haven't really been taking as much time. The one thing I'll say about this event is that the amount of time they give us um, allows me to kind of be a little bit more lax when it comes to... Um, getting these items. I 100 percent everything, mind you. And I wasn't like like how I was, and th this is a close-up, by the way, of good old Chris throwing his bag all over the place. Also, like, there was a brief moment where his bag just threw out of one place out of nowhere and then came back, so that that was interesting. Um, where was I before I kind of blanked out there talking about Santa Claus? Um, yeah, like, okay, now I remembered. Uh, yeah, but the, at the end of the day, I ended up being able to 100% everything without really having to go, Oh, I need to do this one thing or else I'm screwed, like what happened during the Please Don't Feed the Vampire event. But with that in mind, I ended up doing everything just fine. Um, however, due to uh, the way some of these items drop, more point the coal and... Other items, mostly the coal, but there was another item that kind of was a pain. It ended up causing the worst type of thing. Like, two of the items were the worst ones. One of them wasn't as bad. The, 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 uh, the goggles was the second worst, but the worst one was the heart attack backpack. And, oh boy, oh boy, what an appropriate name for such an item because looking at what was required to get those uh, uh, things gave me almost gave me a heart attack. What's funny about the heart attack backpack is in the story, um, apparently it was one of those items you can grab within the mall and what it would do is it would actually come alive to try to, I guess, give you a heart attack. I don't know why that was the case. Uh, but, you know, I looked at bags with faces, came across an image, and then they were like, oh yeah, just make this into a thing, and then they designed a backpack that looked like a face, and, of course, Dustin, uh, you'll find out soon enough when it came to Justin, uh, the bag itself actually makes an appearance, however, it's only, like, near the very end of this, I will share with you, however, in the main story, missed opportunity there. Anyways, we're going to continue off with Chris's story after I spend 20 bucks to put all these things down, so here you go. Hello, Santa. Oh, hello, kid. Aren't you a little too big to be visiting Santa? Hey, I'm... I'm not fat. You can't say stuff like that to me. Uh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. <sighs> Whatever. Just give me the latest cool apocalypse for Christmas, alright? Oh, sure. Why not? I'll ask Miss Claus or whatever for the latest copy. For shame, Santa. How dare you fat shame him. What happened to Rudolph after the movie ended? Uh, I don't know, kid. It was just a movie. I mean, you want a rocket for Christmas? Sure, kid. I'll get you a rocket. Totally doable. You're not sure whether you want a car or a boat for Christmas? 
one thing. Why not ask for both? Ho ho ho! Now you'll have to excuse me. My shift is ending. Oh. Oh, hello, manager. Uh, what's up? What? I'm fired? Why? Play Santa's Motorcycle and take a ride on your bike. Now, Santa's Motorcycle was... And here's the funny thing. Both Santa's Motorcycle and the uh, the train... I didn't get to mention this, by the way. Also, again, Santa uh, Claus is riding his motorcycle on the road, running people over. Yeah, he wears his mar he wears his helmet, so yeah, safety. But, nah, he's running people over, riding on the sidewalk. There's a road right there, man. Jeez. Anyways, um, yeah, when it comes to th the items per se, oh, and by the way, look what's back, the full trees, five bucks, nice, that's great, oh, and there's also something else, the tree shines back, 30 bucks, thanks, I guess, also, here's all the three, tr here's every trio now, up and about, scaring people, um, anyways, where was I, before those things interrupted, uh, yeah, so the motorcycle and the train were uh, unique items only available last year during a bundle sale. You can see that through my playthrough of last year's Christmas event. But now this time around you can actually buy them through event currency, so that's a cool idea. I like the fact that they're able to kind of do that kind of stuff. I know there are certain players that are like, oh, I like buying um, the bundles that have unique items in there, and I'm just like, yeah, but, you know, when it comes to variety, I always like giving people the chance to get something without having to go forth and buy the thing. Also, um, eight bucks each for the coal, so keep that in mind. Uh, yeah, uh, why, why so much for the backpack? I'm gonna talk about why that's a problem in a minute when it comes to the the, the quest now I hindsight I knew certain things like this happened so I had to wait to make sure everything was perfect before I went through with it um yeah but there's that the story when it comes to Chris though uh, like him getting fired unless you played last year's event you wouldn't know why he got fired for it explains it better in that kind of story, so maybe we might see that come up in the future, but long story short, he was screwing around with Dustin and um, Lucy thinking that they were elves, like basically that one story as Santa's elves or, help, or Santa's little helpers or something like I'm just trying to remember what it was called, but you know what I'm talking about. So, basically, I'm assuming both Lucy and Dustin uh, ratted him out and he got fired for. And then that which transpires to him being evil Santa. I actually liked his story last year, but when it came to just him here, it kind of doesn't give much context when it's like, Oh, why, why is he doing what he does here? I have no idea. Who knows? Also, here's the big gorilla boy. So, I'm going to put these in for now. I'm going to find homes for them, don't worry. But for now, yeah. Here's, here's Monkey Boy. I'm going to put him right here. Uh, look at that gorilla. Now that's a big gorilla. <laughs> he drops this much, and there you go. Three hours, or two hours and 45 minutes. Nice. Yeah, and he's going to... He's The monkey's going to go after poor Courtney. He has her in her hands. <laughs> Head, his hand is covering her in her face. Oh, yeah. Let's end it off here. And um, I think for the... You can tell why. This is going to be a little bit of a while. But uh, it's going to be well worth it. The next part, we're going to go in-depth finishing off Chris's story. Now... I mentioned that there is a reference, uh, not really a reference, but because of what happened currently with a movie that came out, kind of made this, kind it almost predicted this movie coming out in a way, um, in a weird, like how they went about this, but, uh, but yeah, you're gonna find that out next part, because I think that's about it, uh, the usual stuff, you know what to do. Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna debate. I'm, I'm probably not gonna say to do the thing like I've been doing for the last few videos because I'm not sure if if that's cringy or you know. I don't want to be one of those YouTubers that kind of force people to do things because I I have a firm belief that they will come and 
they have apparently i'm getting up to almost i'm gonna get to close to 200 as of this point so who knows maybe next year i'll be up to like a thousand but that uh that is a uh, well wish it believes there but yeah let me know what you think down below i will be putting part three very soon so take a look into that until then i've been grim i'll be seeing you next time until then don't let krampus come after you I don't know why, but just don't let him do it.